Hello world, happy unboxing. We are here with yet another. I think this is going to be the post resolution continued upgrade to make 2023 delicious. If you made food based resolutions or promised yourself that you would be healthier, we're gonna help you. It's me to the rescue. Let's start with your Gia Spritz. This is the only thing I want to drink for the rest of my life. Gia is based in LA, started as an aperitivo that required mixing. You couldn't just drink it straight out of the bottle. It needed a little bit of sparkling water or it could be turned into a really delicious cocktail, but they made it easy and did it for us. So this is a ready to drink spritz. The base is the Gia aperitivo. Its foundation is Riesling grape juice. So you get something that is really, really flavorful and delicious from the start. The only things that are added to it are natural ingredients. You can read them on the label and they are not weird chemically sounds. You've got yuzu juice, lemon balm extract, elderflower extract, gentian root, fig concentrate, acacia, orange peel, rosemary, ginger, and some color from vegetable juices. It is really, really effervescent, kind of bitter, it doesn't matter if you are after your dry month of January or if you're looking to just drink a little bit less or if this is just something that you find delicious, we can have them every day. They can be mixed with alcohol. They can be had on their own, poured into a fancy glass or drink it straight out of the can, but make sure it's cold. That's the only thing I would recommend, but cheers to you and us and some new delicious treats in our life. It tastes like my favorite spritz with like a really, really nice, like very mild, like bitter herbal finish, but it has this like really nice floral juxtaposition. So you're not just drinking something that's purely bitter. You get a lot of roundness, a lot of length, a lot of complexity. So start unboxing with an open can of that bad boy. Let's have some cheese. The best part of the day. Please meet Cornerstone by Parrish Hill. Parrish Hill is a phenomenal cheesemaker based in Vermont. You get this very, very sexy, um, fun, kind of holy looking cheese, but not the kind that is Swiss, kind that feels like it's not fully pressed. This is a project that Parrish Hill has done where they have worked with a few different cheesemakers that are all making this cheese using raw milk in different parts of the country. So this is a square formed cheese. It looks like a stone. It is purely raw milk, all cow's milk. The cultures are made by acidifying specific cow's milks to develop their own acidic cultures so that you get a really, really complex, very grassy, but also pleasantly acidic cheese. We don't think of acid when we talk about cheese too often. We think of creaminess, we think of grassiness. This has a really nice kind of final sharp bite to it that makes it feel like a complete flavor experience in and of itself. This is something that I have served at every single party I've had in the holidays. And while I resolved to maybe be more responsible with my dairy intake, this isn't going away. It makes me happy. And if you would like joy in your life, this is the cheese to consider eating. So if I were you, I would not do a lot to this cheese. I would eat it as a table cheese. That said, it melts phenomenally. When I think of like a really well-made farmstead cheese, I think of something like this that is pungent, smells like things that came from nature. It may not be the adjective that people would put in like wine notes that are frilly and beautiful and there's no kind of fun quirkiness to it. But for me, this smells like happily roasted vegetables, a little bit of kimchi, and a whiff of compost. So have fun with those tasty notes and tell us what you think. Uh, don't eat this immediately. I think it's really fun to see how the flavor develops. So if you accidentally forget about this for a week and you find it in the back of your fridge, give it a revisit and see if the flavors are the same and see what you think. But keep her whole if you want, grate her onto pasta if you'd want, or Melt it down, put it on a carb. I think this and potatoes would be really, really tasty. Your next cheese comes from Rexburg, Idaho, from our friends at Lark's Meadow. Poco Rojo is one of the darlings of the American Cheese Society competitions, Good Food Award competitions. These are um, farmstead cheeses that are primarily sheep's milk. This one is sheep's milk. You will see some cow's milk from Lark's Meadow, but the 
beauty and the magic really happens with the flavors of this sheep's milk cheese. Poco Rojo kind of goes on a journey while it's in our hands. When we get it, it has this really beautiful kind of hint of redness, hence the name Poco Rojo. There's a little bit of bee linen washed rind bacterial funk to it, but we sit on it for a while and it starts to develop some other types of molds. It becomes really rich, really complex. For me, this is the texture of like a really well-cooked pudding. Uh, and the flavors are like roasted, hearty vegetables. Think like asparagus and artichoke, things that have a lot of depth and complexity on their own. It tastes just like that. So this is another one that I think does really, really well melted, but one that I often find myself just reaching for when I want to treat my friends to a really delicious cheese while we're enjoying each other's company. So for you this year, my hope is that you will continue to eat the things that bring you the most joy, but I hope that you'll upgrade them. I hope that you upgrade your life in a way that Poco Rojo fits into your gatherings and your indulgences. If you're going to eat cheese, I think making it a farmstead artisan choice type of production is going to create a lot of really healthy cultures and bacteria in your belly, but it's also going to make you infinitely happier because you're going to get really special, very unique flavors that are hard to be recreated in an industrial cheese making setting. So you have two stunners that I hope you love. Let's talk proteins. If you missed out on all of our social media in December, you missed out on the announcement of ABC Plus. The tin seafood industry is exploding in a really positive way. People are becoming more comfortable with the idea of eating tin seafood and not feeling like it is this food stamp wartime necessity, but more something that you can appreciate and take your time enjoying. And this is a perfect example of what should be enjoyed and how you should do it. ABC Plus is a new line of tin seafood from the wonderful people behind Chausse Gourmet and Ati Manel. Uh, the cannery is called Chez Misterios, or 100 Mysteries in Portuguese. It is the smallest cannery in Portugal. The entire industry has adopted the idea that a higher volume, more industrial production with volume being the focus is the ideal. But what that means for you is that you're going to get a lot of small sardines in olive oil or with lemon or with tomato. And while we love that and we have tons of that, we wanna add some diversity to the category. And ABC Plus is exactly that. Think of it the same way that the chocolate category has diversified over the last decade and a half. We used to only talk about single origin dark chocolate as the only standard for craft chocolate, but as we have begun to experience wild strains of cacao, we've added inclusion bars and milk chocolate bars to the conversation, this is the same way. We are going to have really, really sustainable really high quality fish, but in different sauces from different parts of the world. So what you get is one that I love as a first dive into ABC Plus, because it is not something that you would expect to see in a tin. This is their trout with onion relish. You get a lot more kind of excitement and flavor when it comes to something like this. I think the opening of a can is just really, really, really lovely. So I'm not going to turn this on its head or we'll have a huge mess to deal with, but you have two glistening, beautiful fillets of trout. And beneath that is a really, really rich, but acidic and very pleasant onion relish. When I serve this at home, I'll take those trout fillets out and then dump the entire contents of the can on top of it and then sop the whole thing up with my favorite baguette. I'd like you to do the same, but if you're looking to zhuzh this up or put it in more of a plated experience. It does incredibly well with a really starchy rice. I love it with potatoes and it's also really great on things like roasted vegetables. So this on just a roasted mess of vegetables would be really, really delicious. So keep your tin seafood journey going. Don't forget to try the fun and small and new and unique things like ABC Plus. Hi ABC Plus, we love you a lot. Thank you for making this. Your next meat is porchetta. Uh, this is a very traditional roast and what people in the States have often known as like Italian ham. Uh, it is the pork belly spread out and spread with a mixture of things like rosemary, juniper, 
a lot of salt that is rolled up, tied up, and roasted. And when it is in its roast form, they leave the skin on so that it develops this really, really nice crispness. You get a kind of crunchy exterior and this long cooked, very delicate, but very aromatic meat that I think is one of the best parts of Roman cuisine. When you see this in Rome, it's often served like street style in a panino or in some sort of sandwich. It's not meant to be fussy or frilly. It's something that is meant to sustain you, make you feel full while you're doing whatever you are doing in your day while you're in Rome. So to recreate the Roman jaunt and runabout, we're sending you porchetta. Um, upgrade your sandwiches. If you're going to be taking lunch, you shouldn't have sad lunch, you should have happy lunch. It should taste flavorful, it should be fun. And if you need to close your eyes and pretend that you're on vacation in Rome while you're not and you're waiting for your experience, this will do it for you. If you don't wanna make a panino out of it, roll it around some arugula that's been seasoned with some salt and cherry wine vinegar and you get this kind of acidic and bright and very, very fun way to get your vegetables and your meat all together in one bite. I'm having that for lunch today, so see you then. Moving on to your sweet little treats and indulgences. Um, I'm always looking for a way to have some sort of like fun little desk snack that doesn't make me feel terrible or sorry for myself or like I should have had something better. Meet the Goodio Oat Bites. It is Scandinavian ingenuity in all of the best ways. The ingredients on this, gluten-free whole oat groats, cocoa butter, cocoa beans, gluten-free oat flakes, coconut sugar, and sea salt. So what you get with this is a really fun, indulgent feeling snack that ends up being really, really good for you. There is only like 9% sugar in this. It is decadent, it is crunchy, it satiates that like afternoon need to treat yourself. And I'd like you to do it with this. So hide this in your desk. Don't tell anybody else that it came in the box. Pretend like it wasn't in your box and then hide it and save it for yourself. And when you need a little pick me up, these will do it for you. Uh, I find that there's often a bag in my desk, one on my bedside table, and one for me to have while I'm watching all my favorite shows on Netflix. So if you are having a slow month and really being mindful, do it with her. Man, that makes me happy. Okay. If you're like me, the smell of candied nuts, specifically in sporting events, always smells like the most delicious, wonderful thing that you should have while you're watching your favorite soccer team. Pummel the other team. But they don't taste as good as they smell. They're weird and hard on the outside, but like soggy and soft and like a little depressing on the inside. And it hurts my feelings so much. And I think it makes it worse because I know there are really good caramelized nuts out there. So now I sneak my own nuts into sporting events. And I don't know if that's legal. Nobody arrest me, please. But meet the caramelized pecans of my dreams and hopefully your dreams. If we're going to have a caramelized nut, this should be it. These are from Valencia, Spain. They are very, very slowly caramelized. So you get this like really rich, deep molassesy sweetness and complexity to them, but they're crunchy and not soft and sad, which makes me feel like there is still hope in this world. I hope you heard that. It is the best part of this whole thing. These can go on your salads. They can be another kind of table side snack, but I would recommend throwing these into your next semi-fredo or your next gelato or using it as a topping for Sundays. Or if you are staying healthy, put it on yogurt and fruit. It adds that crunch and that little bit of extra juice that makes things like breakfast feel a little bit exciting still. So wherever you take them, I hope you appreciate the crunch. I hope it brings you an immense amount of joy and I hope that you don't feel the need to buy sad, soggy nuts ever again. Finally, the most important thing in this entire kit, the Wild Judoa Bar. This is made by our friend Luisa Abram in Brazil. She is committed to only using wild forest cacao from the Amazon. She and her family will bring those dried beans out of the Amazon back to their factory to make really, really delicious wild cacao based craft chocolate. The Judoa River pathway is one that um, they found some really, really special cacao through. Um, this cutout on the inside shows that river pathway. When you get it, spend some time with this packaging. We're really, really proud of it. Um, but we lost access to this bar. Luisa's family didn't find a viable solution. And we stepped in to help. 
Uh, I want to tell you the full story, but I also really want you to listen to a podcast that just recently came out called Wild Chocolate. Uh, it is hosted and done by Rowan Jacobson, who is one of the most important minds in food ever at all, because it is not the fun, soft, frilly stories that kind of get you through your day. It's something that is heavy and has weight and tells the full story, positive and negative, about what it takes to make chocolate where it is wild. So um, keep an eye out for it. Um, we'll be posting a lot of it. We'll send a link along with um, your unboxing kit, but it is really, really important and special. And we're so, so proud of Louisa and what she's doing. And we're really, really thrilled to have been a part of this bar. So when you open this, do spend some time with it. Really get comfortable with the texture. It may not be the silkiest, but it has character to it. It has a lot of really rich, but also very fun, almost candy-like notes, some really nice red fruit notes. I find that this tastes different every single time I open a bar. So I hope it's the same for you, but this is, this is your very special, very wonderful way to really set the tone for the rest of your year. So as you go through 2023, I hope you continue to allow yourself to have really special moments with food and with people you love. And when the time comes to pull out the big guns, here's your gun. We fight with love and power. Um, happy unboxing. Happy February. We'll see you soon. I hope you enjoy everything. Throw us your favorite in the comments and we'll see you next time. <laughs>